Okay, so uh, uh, also, uh, and I guess we're kind of trying to go down the line here, but uh, you have the engine start function, the engine stop function. If you, when you depress this button, you don't have to hold it until the engine's dead. You just if you just tap it, 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 it holds the engine kill signal for four seconds, which ought to be enough to kill the engine. I mean, you can hold it and hurt anything, but uh, you don't need to. Just just tap it, and the engine's going to die. We already covered this one for the uh, throttle. This is here if you have uh, if you have no free or excuse me if you have free swing, which means you wouldn't have remotes. But if you have free swing, this is where you release. I reiterate, this is where you release your swing brake. And I don't know how many times even I've gotten in a crane out here. Damn thing won't swing, and I want it swing, I want it swing. Well, this has got to be lit up for you to swing on a free swing um, uh, crane. And uh, if you uh, turn this off and turn it back on. It automatically reset the brake. <clears throat> so anytime you get out of uh, crane mode, anytime you get out of crane mode for any reason, that brake's going to automatically reset. You don't have to. Well, <clears throat> you can turn it off, obviously, but if you don't, it's going to turn off anyway. Kind of a, a added feature. Okay. Any questions so far? I catch my breath. Good. Okay. Okay. You need a water or anything, Charlie? No, I'm good. I'm good. Anybody need a coffee, water? No, don't. All right. Um, okay, this, uh, this last one over here, this is your override. It's got a picture of a boom with an unlocked uh, key lock on it, so that's the symbolism for unlocking. <clears throat> in order to unlock, the only uh, you have to be in crane mode. If you're not in crane mode, there's really nothing to, over, to override anyway, so it's meaningless anyway. But once you're in crane mode, you're active, you're hot, uh, you hit this and you override, and it has the same override capability as the old override you're used to. It overrides everything. Uh, you know, so if you're too blocked, uh, well, it it uh, you know it unlocks everything that you would too block or, or overload. It doesn't matter for whatever reason. It overrides everything, and you're on your own, and it's momentary. Uh, one good feature, which some of you will like, is when you are depressing this, and you're let's say in a two block or overload situation, it actually shuts off the alarm while you're holding it. Yay! Kind of nice. <laughs> <laughs> also, also, even though let's say you're too blocked. And, you're, and let's say you did it intentionally, and you know you're going to be too blocked. If you turn crane power off, the alarm goes off. It doesn't stay on. Yeah. And once you turn it back on, <laughs> you, you've got a two block situation. It's going to alarm mm -hmm. unless you hit override. So, mm -hmm. little, little, so if you're diagnosing the two block problem, you have to have somebody sitting in the cab. Otherwise, you can't hear the alarm. That is true. And that sucks. <laughs> that is true. All right. Well, you're always bitching about it. Yeah, yeah. Well, well, no, no. yeah, it, well uh, it's never done no. right, DJ, so just, you know. Sure. Yeah. Well, okay. Yeah. Everything's you, uh, bulletproof. You want a bowling ball? Huh? You want a bowling ball? Yeah, well, that's probably a good idea. Just toss a bowling ball. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe, in your case, two bowling balls. <laughs> 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 Alright, well, that's probably a good idea. Yeah, yeah, I see your point. In fact, uh, I was dealing with a no, situation, I was dealing with a situation make sure. yeah, earlier in the week, but yeah, you're right. So you wouldn't be able to listen for the alarm and know that that was going on, yeah. because this one has actually has a built-in alarm also, but you can't hear it. It's very very muted. Yeah. The other one you can hear. It. Um, okay. Uh, getting down to here, uh, this is the uh, winch level here, and uh, we have uh, winch two and winch one. Winch one is the main winch. Winch two is the aux winch. Um, you have a, a lockout, an individual lockout on both winches, so you lock out one or the other. Both. And on is locked up? On is locked. Lock. On is locked, yeah. If, I know you can't see it from there, but the symbolism here is important. Oh, okay. It shows the lock, whereas this is unlocked. That's so right. when you press this button, you actually unlock, but you press these buttons and you're locking that. Um, you also have uh, individual two speed uh, buttons for both. If you're locked out, the two speed doesn't work, but as soon as you unlock it, uh, and this is high speed when it's lit up. It's the, you know, high speed when it's lit up. Uh, same as swing brake, if you turn off crane power, they unlock or no? No, okay, if you turn off crane power, let's say, uh, what do I got here? Okay, I've got the main winch locked, and I'm high speed here. If I turn off the crane, okay. I still maintain those values. Okay. So they're still active. That's one of the only things on there that'll maintain its its memory, right? I mean, as yeah, far as the winch is concerned? Right, right. There's not much else. I mean, it won't remember that you had the swing unlocked. Yeah, no. 
they won't remember that you were overriding, you know. So yeah, those are other two things. Uh, but yeah, on the on the winches, uh, for obvious reasons. Okay. Yeah. Um, and the horn. And this this is always active. You don't have to be in the seat. This is on all the time. You hit it. And the horn is located under the cab, not in the truck. It's actually in the cab, underneath the underneath the cab. Um, okay. Another another feature which I cannot actually demonstrate. Uh, when you're in outrigger mode, we have proc sensors on all the outriggers now. There's eight, there's, there's eight proc sensors for the mid and full extension uh, indicators. When you're in outrigger mode, these three lights are on, there are eight LEDs, two here, two here, two here, and two here, that will light up telling you that all those proc sensors are being, are being recognized. If an LED light does not come on, that means there's something wrong with that proc sensor or the connection to that proc sensor, in other words, is there something wrong there? Now, that will not keep you from functioning or operating or changing your uh, chart or anything like that. It's just knowledge to you that, you're, that, the, that the crane is not, or the crane control system is not seeing that sensor. That's all it means. Um, just like, so that's, uh, so you got those eight sensors and that would just tell you that those eight sensors are being, being uh, monitored and they're, they're active. Yeah, we were out here uh, yesterday and all of a sudden we were having all kinds of things going on and, and two of our lights weren't on. Oh, shit. Nobody bothered to look at the fact that they didn't have the two outriggers fully extended. They were short <laughs> enough to foot because there was a cab, another cab sitting mm -hmm. in the way. That, well, that pissed me off. <laughs> because I thought we were going to have to change out harnesses, change out proc sensors, do something that damn guy didn't even have that. So he was doing his job. So he was doing his job. Um, any other questions about this? These lights, by the way, when this light is on, that doesn't mean that you just push the button. It means that the PLC has actually had that signal come to it and it sends the signal back. So, you know, it's, so it's this, these lights are not being lit up internally. They're actually being sent a signal from the PLC saying you, you've got this mode or you're, you're doing this activity. <clears throat> so if these, uh, so these LED lights are, uh, uh, you don't need to be, if this LED light, light comes on, then you don't need to be worrying about the communication thing or anything, everything's fine. There's, if something's not working, it's just someplace else, someplace else. If the LED light doesn't come on, the chances are something terribly wrong has gone with the PLC, it's lost power or, or the wire's broken or something significant or if, you know, this might have come unplugged or something, you know, obviously doesn't work. But, so either everything works or nothing works. <clears throat> Yeah. Charlie, where did you get the, the, the uh, as far as like your design on that, uh, you know, the company that you got that from, they kind of specialize in some heavy duty yeah, dirt equipment they, stuff, yeah, right? This, this came from a company called Greyhill, which is very well known and well respected in the agricultural industry and a lot of industrial off-road vehicles. These are, these are used in off-road tractors. This thing is, is totally weatherproof, bulletproof. Uh, I, I, we've never had, we, we never had a problem with them, but then we got really limited time with them. But I did a lot of research on this unit. It's been out quite a while. Uh, my only pet peeve with these guys is this operates off of J1939 protocol, uh, and they come out a new one that uh, operates off of Open Can, which I would prefer. But that's between us and them. And we don't need to worry about it. Uh, we're going to stay with the J1939 uh, protocol, and uh, that's just the way it's going to be. And it's control or it's connected just with this single cable here. Um, I don't know if you'll ever have a problem with it. How many of you actually work with uh, uh, CAN uh, signals up to now? But you, terminating resistors are a real important issue with uh, CAN communications. And here's the terminating resistor right here. It's on this side. This is all enclosed, so it theoretically should never be a problem. But if somebody were missing in there and did something to this resistor or reverse the communication wires, you know, Who's to say what? But obviously, by the time y'all get the crane, obviously all of this will be working and operational. Otherwise, nothing works. Send it out to the rural fleet and touch your pockets. Yeah, try anything to get it to work. Yeah, but well, I do like that switch. I was just kind of curious on the M for the throttle. Uh, <laughs> switch more. more. Just, you know what? Yeah, more. more. There you go. Yeah, more. More. more throttle. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I was trying to figure out what to tell them you know, when they asked it. That's international. Oh, international yeah. M1. Manual throttle. <laughs> I know that the main, the main PLC cabinet is, uh, is in the back uh, behind the chair. Uh, once you fold down the seat, it's readily accessible uh, inside. It's also got one new feature. 
is that it's absolutely loaded with a, um, it's got a uh, Westman um, fuse panel on top for access oh, wow. to all the fuses. So there's not just one in the front of the truck mm -hmm. anymore. Where is that located? This is right behind the seat. seat. Oh. Readily accessible. Where is it listed on what fuses? What? It's right here. You see this decal? It's right there. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I, I've got issues with the uh, people that are uh, putting this together. Okay. Us. No, seriously, there's supposed to be a decal on there, and it's on my to-do list to tell, find out why they didn't put the decal on. It's designed. It's there. It just didn't show up with them. So. Anyway, it's it'll a, be on there. Moving yeah. forward, you'll have a decal. Yeah, moving forward, there will be a decal on there to show you that. I remember that. <laughs> yeah, uh, and it uh, it individually uh, protects a lot of individual devices, so that, uh, for instance, the uh, oil cooler uh, shorts out. Well, it doesn't shut down the whole crane or anything. It just shuts down the oil cooler. Uh, the PLC is on. It's the PLC actually has three fuses it operates on. Uh, one that the controls the uh, Logic functions, one of them controls the relays, one of them controls the sensors. So if all your sensors all of a sudden are dead, as far as having power, chances are that fuse is dead. Uh, so, uh, anyway. uh, we're using an IFM effector um, PLC. The IFM effector has been in the PLC business since 1966. Uh, their unit is well proven and bulletproof, uh, I feel, because it's uh, IP67. Even though we've got it in an IP67 box, inside of a cab, so, you know, you got about three three levels of protection for it there, so I uh, feel pretty comfortable going to keep it uh, there. Um, there. There are a lot of wires in here. Um, there's only one relay, and there are no diodes. Um, so the one relay that's in here is only because of the remote radio, so if you don't have a remote radio, uh, that's what powers the remote radio, is this one relay. And, um, so there's not relays for the horn or any, any other reason. There's just one relay, and that's because of the power to the, uh, the radio. Um, we will have schematics for the inside of this box. I really kind of doubt that you'll be calling me on issues inside the box. I really do, unless you fry something. And I don't think anything can happen, but I don't see y'all getting into this box very damn often. If ever. Because all your fuses on the outside. Mm -hmm. um, we have uh, a number of Deutsch connectors down here. They're color coded. We found out recently, however, that these Deutsch, these can be, they're, although they are keyed from insertion in one way, they can be forced the other way. And we've had people actually reverse them. So be very careful when you remove these, if, or if you remove them, that you put them back the way they came. Um, like I said, they have these two keys on them, and you'll never remember this now, but the narrow one goes to the front and the fat one goes to the back. But, you know, if you, it, it, it can be forced the wrong way, and if you do, that's not good. That's not good. Okay. Uh, they're color-coded by function. Uh, there's two grays because they ran out of colors. <clears throat> this one is for the radio remotes. They're nicely labeled, but unfortunately you'll never see the labels because there's a four right here. So I'm, I'm going to have to see if I get the labels put up on top so you can actually see them. <clears throat> uh, there's two uh, CAN bus connections. This one's the J1939 that goes to the keypad. This one goes to the I.O. modules that are in the turret and in the lower section for other uh, functions that's used. And then you've got, uh, you wire your uh, power to your I.O. modules here. The oil cooler here, this is your main power in. We've got a ground here. This connector over here is where we plug in to program the PLC so we can actually program it without actually getting inside. In fact, we program this one just before going in. Okay. Um, is that all you want me to cover for now? Or do we get into the turret or the other? I, th I think go ahead and let's talk about the turret. While we're here, let's, let's kind of give a, an overview of everything that you got going on and then we can go uh, just kind of go over out on the crane itself after that. This is this is one of two uh, output uh, modules that are in the turret. <clears throat> this this uh, this is the power to the IO module that 